Hi guys, it's Ben Pierce with the Rosa Tracker, and I'd like to talk to you about how we can get payloads into space without using any kind of propellant. Now, everything will have to be launched into low Earth orbit right now, but there are a lot of possibilities to go from there to something much higher that don't use any kind of propellant. And propellant is one of the really, really hard things. If you need propellant, then you're not going to be able to make it as far as you would like. It just will limit how fast you can get anywhere. So let's talk about some of these propellantless systems that are out there. First, let's talk about the closest to one of these we have right now, which is an ion drive. An ion drive does use propellant, but it doesn't use very much. What it does is takes a gas, usually xenon, and will, one molecule at a time, convert that into an ion. So it takes one of the electrons, it will shoot it out the spacecraft, and take one of the ions and it goes through an electromagnetic field sending it really really fast and out the back end and that will push it forward using a very very small amount of fuel. This will gradually push it forward until it can achieve some great speeds and this is the most efficient type of rocket engine that we really have today. The problem is, is it uses a lot of electricity and it still does require some fuel. But what are some possibilities that don't use fuel? The most familiar one of these is called a solar sail. Any kind of light has a pressure that it pushes on. The lights in this room are pushing me back in here. Now, it's not very much force. You'd take something very, very sensitive to even be able to measure it on a person like me, especially with the relatively dim light in the room. But sunlight has considerably more energy than the lights in this room. And it can still exert a force. Now, for something, say, the Falcon Heavy upper stage and payload with Starman, that force comes out to be about 1 to 2 meters per second per year that it will change a velocity, which is not very much. The problem is, is this is a very, very gentle force, so what you have to do to make this work is you need a sail. So, a sail boat will use cloth, which is a relatively light substance compared to, say, wood or steel or whatever other frame, and that cloth will be used to take the wind pattern and push it along. Now, cloth is still far, far, far too heavy to really make an effect of things, but the idea is, is you make this solar sail out of materials that are really, really light. One of the best uses is mylar. Mylar is the same substance that's in inflatable balloons. This metallic type of substance and this is a really really light substance that reflects light really really well which is a very important thing for a solar sail. If you reflect the light you get twice the forces if you just absorb it. So there have been a number of these that have been created. One of them sent by the Japanese actually sent a spacecraft to Venus. And the Planetary Society is going to launch one soon on the third flight of the Falcon Heavy, along with a number of other payloads that will demonstrate this technology even further. But it's a really hard system. To make it work really well, you require a very, very large solar sail. And it becomes difficult to direct this huge sail, and it just takes a lot of work. But that's not the only one. There are a number of other ways that you can do it. You can use the magnetic and electric fields within the solar system to push you along somewhat. By taking a solar sail and energizing it, you can use the electric field, which sounds pretty neat. There have been some tests done in the laboratory with those, and they've worked reasonably well. But they still have their own issues. They don't work in all conditions, and they would only work in the solar system in any case. But still, they have some potential. All of these systems also are very difficult to use when you're orbiting a body because if you have a solar sail you're going to have to change the orientation of the sail every time you move into your orbit which is going to make it really really difficult to do anything useful. But there is at least a couple of other interesting ideas. One of them that's really in the realm of science fiction is called the buzzard ramjet. And what this does is it has a big giant scoop 
and it will scoop up all of the hydrogen that's in interstellar space into this very, very tiny jet where it's so hot that it will fuse it together and shoot it out back and use fusion to push itself forward. This is a really neat idea if you could get it to work, but you'd have to be going reasonably fast. And this works because the truth is, is there is no complete vacuum. Even in interstellar space, there's some very, very low amounts of gas, but it still exists. But let's combine a couple of these ideas together. And this idea was proposed by Robert Zubrin, the founder of the Mars Society and otherwise a really kind of revolutionary aerospace engineer. This is called the dipole drive. The basic concept is, is you have two solar sail-like substances that have electric fields that will be on opposite ends, hence the dipole. It's kind of like a big giant traditional capacitor. So what will happen is a particle that's coming in through there, depending on its charge, will be shot off in one direction or the other. And the positive charges will go one way, the negative goes the other way. So if they had the same mass, then you would tend to cancel it out. But they don't have the same mass. An electron has substantially less mass than a proton, and most of the protons that are out there, positive masses, are attached to something else. They're, you know, a beta particle, for instance, has two protons and two neutrons. And if you have molecular oxygen or some other things that have a positive charge, then you'll tend to get even more acceleration. But because of the mass indifference of these ions that are really everywhere, then you'll get a net charge. This will tend to push you off in a direction with time. One thing that's interesting is this drive works even better than some of the pseudoscientist drives that operate on some physical principle that we don't know. It's a relatively energy efficient way and it could get you going to a pretty decent fraction of the speed of light. The amount of force that you get will depend on how much voltage you have and how much energy you can do. And you might need a sail like substance that's on the order of a hundred meters circle or something roughly like that. But you could use one of these in low earth orbit to get higher or just to maintain the one a spy satellite that uses a huge amount of fuel because it stays in really low orbit could actually stay there for a considerably longer period of time because of the atmosphere being thicker there it would be able to get more force and so it would be able to stay up there longer and this could be used for interplanetary and even interstellar travel interstellar would require some kind of a nuclear power source but that's not really an issue there's some really neat ideas in space propulsion that are out there, and I really found this dipole drive to be quite interesting, and hopefully we'll see something developed with this and be able to provide journeys to other stars. Thank you guys for joining me. Let me know whatever questions or comments you guys have. Let me know if there are any other really high-end systems that you'd like me to talk about. Until next time, keep on tracking. Take care.